Uh, around that time I, I made a film about the docks and uh, in it uh, a film of me uh, working on one of the railway lines with my grab, uh, bringing clay out of the uh, ship and uh, dropping it into a hopper that was on the clay shed that was uh, all the way along here. Uh, but now uh, it looks as though it never happened. Many were the cargoes which the port of Preston handled in its day. From the port of Parr in Cornwall came China clay, which was sent by ship to many parts of the world. A dock is a massive machine, an industrial enterprise. The they who work there are more aware of the human aspect. A crane driver remembers. When I was working on these grubs, one of the grub drivers swung his grub way out uh, over the side of the ship and down under the combings where the dockers were working and the grub hit one of the dockers knocked him to the floor as it dropped over him luckily the grub was partly closed and uh, it was shaped in the form of a v and he was led underneath uh, the v uh, with his feet out at one side and his head out at the other anyway as the grub started to close the dock dockers round him shouted to the hatchman who called to the crane driver to stop the grub closing cutting off uh, both his head and his feet. The port accepted cargoes of from five to eight hundred tons of clay, which were then dispatched to various industries, chiefly in East Lancashire. A regular visitor to the port, the ferry boat, the plainsman, carried upwards of 75 containers. These ferry boats sailed between Preston, Dublin and Lyon in Northern Ireland. The dockers' sense of humour was a part of their survival kit. There was great informality and most people were known by a nickname. When I went down the docks in about 1950, uh, I used to be up the crane working with perhaps 14 dockers and they all knew my name and I didn't know theirs of course so I used to call them all my dear anyway in no time at all that was my nickname my dear there was one of the dockers and uh, chatting with another one and uh, mentioned that he'd tummy trouble anyway he said like uh, have delicate bowels uh, and after that he was always known as delicate bowels there was Pluto, Spider born drunk, ever so many different nicknames, quite funny. One of the uh, dockers who used to go into town looking for fights, he loved a fight as much as anything else, a real rough diamond, and he was eating a butty walking on the quayside when he tumbled in the dock. Anyway, he shouted and chapped ran to the quayside, and there he was, treading water, still eating his butty. Another docker fell in the uh, docks, not too clean he wasn't, and uh, somebody said he, he's in the docks, throw him a rope. And another docker said, never mind a rope, throw him a bar of soap. An oblong frame, or spreader, was suspended from the hook of the crane with a wire and shackle at each corner, and fastened by the dockers to the top four corners of the container. This was an improvement on previous methods, which was itself improved. A spreader was constructed with a box and tap with lever-controlled mechanism, which turned a hook to grip each corner of the container. But for all the technical sophistication and mechanical contrivances, the job, in the end, often depended upon human instinct and experience. Freddie Mercer used to drive one of the grab cranes that occasionally worked at the crag berth loading cargo without the grab on. 
He was loading uh, general cargo this day, which included occasionally uh, boxes weighing something like a ton and a half. When uh, Tommy Livesey was uh, the foreman on the job, uh, Jack was doing the hatching, and uh, Tommy Livesey told him to go and brew, and he'd do the hatching for him. Now, Tommy Livesey was a bit hard of hearing and a bit short-sighted, uh, but a good uh, foreman nevertheless. He uh, did the hatching, and uh, his son, uh, who the, Tommy, they used to call the undertaker, was working down below. Freddie Mercer came over the dock with uh, the, the container and uh, lowered it into the dock, uh, boat. The... Uh, Below, un the undertaker was uh, working, and uh, the container weighing a ton and a half came down, touched him on the head, and saw the undertaker to get out of the way, drop flat on the floor beneath the uh, 30 underweight container, and screamed, don't lower, don't lower. And, and at the same time, he could hear his dad shouting, lower, lower, lower. Anyway, luckily, Fred didn't lower the container, so uh, Tommy was able, uh, the undertaker was able to scramble from under it. He then went to uh, Freddy Ponty, the driver, and said to him, why didn't you lower, uh, Fred, when the dad was telling you to? And Freddy said, I don't know. He said, uh, it was just something that told me not to lower. I was working on China Clay once with the grab and I'd put graphite on the brake to make it run through smoothly. Anyway, I put, must have put too much on and as I lowered the grab over the ship, it kept running through, but I didn't bother. Anyway, it lowered until it hooked on the combings with half the grab over the uh, companionway and half over the hatch. Uh, OB, unfortunately, was stood inside it, a well-built chap, and I could see him with his trilby hat on looking up at me in my cab, and my knees went to jelly. Anyway, I managed to keep it balanced there, and uh, OB got down from under it, and uh, uh, all he'd done was bruise his ribs. Then it slid across when the boat settled, it came on out, and I dropped it in the uh, ship. Eventually, at a cost of around £225,000, the Port Authority purchased a lever crane, which speeded up loading tremendously and cut down on handling even more. Less handling meant a lot of jobs, but not everything which was lost was desirable. At one time, you could have dockers working all day carrying timber on the shoulders, and odd ones would have blood running from under their shoulder pads. Uh, and it wasn't uh, really unusual to have a, a docker buried under coal as it was tipped into the coal boat. This visit to Preston Docks would not be made today. In October 1981, the port of Preston was closed and the part of Lancashire Line was lost forever.